Good morning. Good morning. Great to see you in our webinar for also partners. Yeah, so the topic for today is how to build a system to generate hundreds of leads for your cloud services or your products. Yes, and we will start today by introducing our speakers. And first of all, I want to introduce gentlemen on my left, Mr. Andres, Andres Yushenko. Uh, myself and Andres, we founded IBD Consulting three years ago, back in 2017, with the idea that uh, digital marketing is indeed disruptive, extremely useful thing in B2B, and that we see a big opportunity there. Andres is extremely experienced in multiple corporations like uh, Nokia, La Telecom. Uh, he has uh, run uh, multiple uh, Microsoft uh, Office, Office 365 businesses, and he has been instrumental at launching Office 365, like what, what was it, like eight, nine years ago yeah. in some 25 countries in Europe. So uh, I guess Andres might be some of the most knowledgeable uh, persons uh, regarding uh, launching, marketing, cloud software as <laughs> service products and the similar things. Thank you, Roland, for such a great introduction. So let me introduce also Roland. Roland Ozolinch is uh, my business partner. As, uh, as he already mentioned, we founded IBD Consulting a couple of years back. And uh, he has uh, a very um, valuable experience in different uh, areas. First of all, he was managing uh, Microsoft partners for many years, starting from you know distributors, CSPs, and helping them transform from being traditional uh, distributors to uh, selling cloud through the CSP model. Then he also was uh, working in the solution sales, starting from enterprise customers up to educational uh, institutions. So he has uh, a lot of experience of uh, solution sales, complex sales, and, and so on. Then he, uh, after the Microsoft, he also worked for a few years in a startup uh, er area, and he managed to grow from zero to multi-million business in uh, aerospace uh, industry. So I think the, his, his experience is very valuable also uh, for us today. All right, but let's get to what exactly we are talking today. And today we will cover exactly the subjects that we offered, uh, that we will be talking about. So we will start with, I think, laying foundations of what we are covering later today. And we will start with how B2B buyers are buying technology today and how to connect with them at large scale. Yeah, it's also important that as soon as uh, you know the opportunity is big, there are a lot of competition and very critical is to understand how to stand out and how to become a natural choice of these uh, potential customers. Then we move to perhaps the central and most important, most exciting part of our webinar, where we will be talking how to build a system for lead generation, how to put together technologies, processes, what mistakes to avoid, and basically how to get a digital sales engine up and running and generating leads. Yeah, and then of course it's important how to fuel in this uh, this engine, and we will talk where to find the content for your campaigns, uh, what you can find from Microsoft or other vendors, what you can find and get from Alzo as your partner, and uh, how to build the great campaigns uh, based on these materials. Then we will move to part which I hope will be helpful for many of you, and that is how to get your campaigns co-funded. And we know from uh, our experience that uh, quite often it is possible to get some marketing funding either from uh, CSPs, such as, such as also, from vendors such as Microsoft and also different vendors. However, wait until we really, really cover, cover the details of how to do it. Yeah. And last but not least is how to start. What are the steps for you to take in order to really, um, you know, implement this approach uh, in very kind of practical manner. All right, but let us start with uh, discussing how B2B buyers are buying today, because it's extremely important. Uh, because you see, the only way you can sell to somebody is the way they are ready to buy, <laughs> not other other way. Now, if we think about um, about uh, sales or purchase process, we usually think that yeah. sales is the channel. 
But if we look at a bit more details at how the purchasing happens or how complex this process is, then it's kind of crazy. Because you see, uh, first of all, there's lots of people involved. Usually, usually there are at least uh, four or five people involved in purchasing decision. Yes. And process is also quite tense. It's, it's quite political usually. Uh, people have doubts. They have... Uh, they have uh, fear, they don't want to appear incompetent, they are concerned, will the solution work, what Gartner tells about it, what IDC, what perhaps Forrester, how to compare alternatives, etc, etc. So, um, really, it's not a pleasant process. Absolutely. And, and also because very often careers are online. Uh, remember, there was a saying that nobody was ever fired for purchasing IBM. <laughs> right, and people indeed they are they are, they are quite concerned how this purchase uh, decision, uh, what kind of impact it will leave on their professional development, on their career, will they or will they not uh, let down their colleagues and so on and so on. So this is quite a difficult and tricky thing. It's a minefield to navigate. And uh, if we look at data that we have available where buyers are spending their time, what actually they are doing, then we see it quite clearly that most time actually spent on research, on things like figuring out what exactly we need, how, mm -hmm. to, how mm -hmm. to buy it, what should be our requirements, what are others doing, etc., etc. And the thing is that actually if we look at uh, this purchase process in total, <laughs> research takes 2.7% times more time than time spent with suppliers. So with suppliers, generally only 17% of time is spent. However, if company is willing to talk with two or three suppliers, then each supplier gets even less time for, uh, for discussion. <coughs> Yes, and uh, for that, if you we, if we look to the overall process uh, from you know, today's perspective, we can definitely see that it's becoming more and more buyers driven. So today buyer is starting uh, long before he's getting in touch with, uh, with the sellers or with the potential suppliers. So people going to the web, they start uh, their research by simply, you know, Googling for some uh, particular problem or solution, how to solve that problem. They are going and turning to some communities. They are talking to their peers. They are talking to some professional um, professionals out there. And they are gathering information as well, no other dimensions. So they're trying to build uh, and necessary insights and necessary knowledge for a further uh, kind of decision making, right? Then uh, they're using different, uh, different um, sources of information. They're reading blogs. They're sometimes turning to vendors for white paper or for solution brief. They're also attending webinars. They're uh, willing to, to learn more about specific solution or watch a demo or something like that. And only then, they, when, they, uh, when their um, decision is almost formed, they turning to the seller. To, to discuss more specific details about, you know, pricing, about maybe licensing uh, and some other conditions. Uh, and the point here is that if you are not early enough uh, in this process together with your information, with your tools to help and to enable those potential buyers, there are very big chances that you will not be considered in the shortlist uh, when, when it comes to the decision. Yes, and you know, the tricky thing here is that Actually, if you don't close the deal, you know we, we lost the deal. But in terms of digital marketing or in terms of how buyers are buying today, you will never learn about the deals that you are actually yeah. missing. Yes. So if you don't have a content, if you are not registering uh, your website visitors uh, for downloading the content, you have no idea that actually there was a deal which you missed. And particularly if you, if you look at expanding in international uh, markets. So one thing that you should really uh, think about is how to help your buyers find information, how to explain your point of view, how to explain the problems they have to solve and so on. Yeah. And there is such a um, uh, thing like a buyer journey. It's a process, uh, like a virtual process. Uh, when any of us, when we need something, we go through, right? And uh, there are different stages in this process. And uh, on, the, on the slide now, you can see like very simplified uh, picture, picture of this or visualization of this process and it always starts with uh, understanding uh, my problem, right? Whether I have a problem and uh, 
then you know what what I need to do to solve that problem. Yes, and it's incredibly important to pay attention to, to this first step because you see, unless customer truly believes that they are in trouble, we have a problem, or mm -hmm. we have so huge opportunity we don't want to yes. miss, or we have so so massive risk, uh, they will not do anything. So first step always is just to make sure that uh, you know your prospective buyers are aware of what, what what is there for them, and only then you can take them actually to next step, which is which is interest, and only then they will start to thinking, okay, but actually how do I solve oh, the problem? Yeah, exactly. So they will look for a different solutions, and at this stage they also uh, more willing to understand, you know, in big terms, okay, what are the directions for me? what it means to solve that type of problem, how others solving this type of problem, uh, what are the vendors, uh, what I need to consider, and so on and so forth. So it's still also quite early to start selling at this stage because uh, customers are not, or potential customers are not ready to buy yet. So they're, they're educating and that is what they are looking uh, for. Yes, and the third step is actually consideration. When people are more concerned about the risks, yes. about the costs, about the consequences which may happen if they make this decision. So, and at each stage there are some uh, typical marketing content or good co marketing content content to use to help buyers understand, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, get information and move ahead. Like for awareness, typically what is used, things like uh, blogs, ebooks, white papers, industry analyst reports. For interest, when people are really interested, then things like expert opinions, product comparisons, webinars like today, case studies, etc. And when they come to consideration, then they are very interested to learn what are others doing. They, yes. they are they're interested in things like customer testimonials, like some product tests, detailed cost calculations. Mm -hmm. Like for many companies which have physical premises, a killing thing is to have customers visit, let's say, a factory, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So that you can actually see, experience how the product uh, product is made and, uh, and so on. Yeah, so uh, just to sum up on, on this uh, part, right? It is really important uh, that, um, you know, you think through this buyer journey of your potential customers. You have to align your marketing and, and sales activities according to the way how buyers are buying today. Yes, and and it's again I want to want to stress how important it is to do actually a formal buyer journey planning. Like uh, uh, there are outside there there are many templates how to do it, but the important thing is process because mm -hmm. what you need, as Andre said, you need to have sales in the room, you need to have perhaps support in the room who are talking with customers all the day. It's beneficial if you also you have management in the room yes. because then you can uh, really think uh, think about this uh, buyer's journey, think about marketing content you need, think about what are the questions you need to answer, and so on. Yeah, and better you understand that process, more valuable you be can become to your potential customers, right? Mm -hmm. And another thing, do not rush to sell. Mm -hmm. So often uh, we see, you know, companies having such temptation to put a price tag on their offers as the first thing. That is wrong. Nobody is asking you for a price as the as the as the first step. Um, think about like I mean, if you are buying a complex solution, it's like what? It's like. No marriage, perhaps. Yes, yes. It's, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's super important, really, not to rush uh, to sell. You need to enable your potential buyers. You need to provide them necessary insights. You need to empower them for internal discussions. The, uh, you know, help them with information so that they can use in their uh, in their kind of um, decision making process. Yes, remember that purchase process is real difficult, and your role, first of all, is to help out your 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 buyers make the process easy for them convince them provide this white paper mm -hmm. case study calculation whatever whatever they need yes and um, another thing when planning any digital marketing activities or or, or or buyers journey consider the length of purchase cycle it's actually not uncommon that purchase cycle is month perhaps years perhaps uh, perhaps even as much as three four years so you cannot expect uh, people to pay for your solution like in two weeks after you launch campaign. 
Yeah, of course, it very much depends. There are some products and some solutions which are very like uh, transactional focused, right? But uh, if you think of, you know, buying a security solution or implementing an ERP or CRM, uh, it's definitely, you know, a matter of months, if not even longer, you know, and, and that should be really taken into consideration. Next topic is how exactly to stand out in marketplace, how to be visible and how to become, you know, very logical, like a natural choice for your uh, prospective customers. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, probably not a very new topic for you as, as Microsoft also is promoting it uh, very, very, you know, promptly and uh, for a long time already. It is super important for you to understand how do you position yourself on the, on the marketplace. And there are different ways how you can do that. Uh, and one of the most successful ways of doing that, and that is what uh, proved to be uh, successful for many Microsoft partners as well, is specialization. So there are different ways, again, how you can specialize. You can specialize on specific uh, technologies or specialize on specific industries, or you can specialize even on specific verticals. Yes. And, you know, uh, try to think of way to stand out as, as Venn diagram and try to think what should be your this cross section of those rings. What makes you really, really unique? Because mm -hmm. you don't need to make happy all the customers in market. You need to really make happy your small niche of customers. And it is our own experience as well, yes. that specialization and becoming real specialists and experts in some kind of narrow market allows you to much, much easier to market and sell your services in international markets. Yeah. And imagine as well, like a whole market, uh, there are a lot of companies like yours doing similar things, right? And uh, if you become generalist, uh, you are basically facing hundreds, if not thousands of similar companies offering the same. And then it's super hard to compete. And uh, very often what we see that this competition uh, goes down to the pricing. So whether I am offering better price than my neighbor, right? And uh, if you are specializing, it's a completely different story. So you're turning the conversation not to the from the from the price to actually the competency what you can offer, and to the you know becoming a valuable business partner to your customers. Yes, exactly right. And uh, you see, uh, buyers first of all prefer specialists. And once once you are positioned as specialist, there are many problems go away. Yes. Suddenly, it's not a problem that. Uh, you are, let's say, in, 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 in Latvia or, or Finland or in Ukraine, right? And that you don't speak local language of, the, of, the, of your customers or maybe your software doesn't have local language interface because your, your solution, your expertise, your level of specialization is so important that basically it gives you a license to be considered, be seen as mm -hmm. specialist, be listened to, and also it allows to charge, I would say, higher higher pricing, yes. pricing as well. So how to communicate this specialization or, or how to prove that you are, you are an expert? And here I think uh, the key message is that online, you are basically what your content is. Yes. It's basically e equal thing. The only way how your prospects can experience you is through your content. Exactly. And that is, uh, again, referring to this buyer journey. That is where all starts. People are not searching uh, by names, um, uh, you know, except if you are super, you know, well positioned, you know, very strong global brand, like for instance, Microsoft, right? Or maybe other, uh, other vendors out there, then obviously they have very strong awareness uh, uh, on the market and people are searching for their specific solutions um, as well. But if you are, uh, you know, a managed uh, service provider or if you have own solution, then either you need to invest a lot into your branding, which is also something needs to be uh, done, or you have to own certain topics. You have to really become a kind of somebody who provides valuable insight, valuable information when people search for that. Yes, and again, it depends how you define the industry. But sometimes if you, if you define your industry or your market narrowly enough, we see that quite often there is opportunity to do things yes. like really own the industry, be somebody who does, let's say, customer survey and produces annual state of industry reports or, or, or write the first white paper which talks about specifically, let's say, um, 
fish processing equipment manufacturers, yes. right? Exotic industry, not big, but very often you can really, really own uh, that part of the marketplace. And uh, a couple of more points regarding content. Uh, first of all, you really need to think about producing high quality original content because it serves not only purpose of, you know, purely informing your customers, but it also builds trust. It creates your brand. It's basically talks. It does talking for you. And probably you want this talking to be of a high quality. Original content, well-researched, uh, based on data, etc., etc. So, yeah, again, uh, just to stress out again on the, on the quality of the content, we often see that there are some kind of blog posts or some uh, e-books or similar content offered. And this is uh, very often too generic. So it's like stays on the high level, explaining uh, the same what is already explained in many thousands of other forms and so on. So customers uh, not getting any anything new from that. So by when you're creating a content, it's super important really think, okay, but what is the unique uh, value add uh, my content will provide to my potential customers. Yes, and look what happens if you really have a quality new original content. It's, it works like magic. So uh, here are some quotes from, uh, from one of our customers. We were running uh, with them a campaign with rather complex, expensive solution in rather large market. And what they say, so what happens when their sales is follow upping with uh, prospects who have signed up for the for the white paper. So what they are saying, they are saying that, well, generally, we are suddenly getting really high quality leads, they can get directly to decision maker, they have their mobile phone number, right? When they reach them, they really have a quality conversation. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not always that, uh, you know, buyers are ready to, to buy right away. But sellers really have their attention, they have their trust, they already have high reputation even before the first call or first uh, first mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. Call success rate goes goes up. Also motivation of sales team goes out because suddenly they are not uh, not uh, not uh, forced to do, you know, cold calls to people yeah. who don't know about them, but they call really people who suddenly, you know, really, really respect, uh, respect the company. And again, you will not always win on the first call. Actually, you will probably never win on the first <laughs> call, but you get seat at the table, you are respected and for your sellers, it becomes much, much easier uh, to close uh, the deals. Okay, so then to sum up on this part of our story. Uh, first of all, it is really important to understand who your buyers are by role, by demographic, but many other uh, criteria. And again, don't consider uh, that there is only one person uh, you need to target. You need to consider targeting at least three or maybe even five. Depends on, you know, the market, of course, you are. Uh, but definitely those are multiple persons uh, to be approached. Yes. Try to really do a bit, bit of detective work, a bit of profile. Mm -hmm. Try to set up buyer's person profiles. Include things like demographics, their likely objectives, where they get information, what is their role in organization, what are their concerns, what they see as opportunities, what kind of media they consume. Yeah. And it allows to, to, to target and sharpen your, your campaign, your strategy, your messaging uh, really, really in big way. And the best, of course, here is to conduct phone interviews with, with yeah, exactly. the prospects. That, that, that is the best uh, way because you hearing us probably now you think, oh my gosh, I need to kind of sit and spend hours and hours, you know, creating those buyers personas and so on and so on. Um, the easiest way is really just call a couple of your customers, understand, you know, ask them questions, understand what they think, what they talk uh, and, and so on. And based on that, you will already have very good insights for your uh, marketing activity. Yes, and, and, and usually those kind of interviews are incredibly revealing. Even <laughs> even even we have had cases that uh, our customers have positioned uh, their product in one category, but actually if you ask their customers, they see them being in completely different category. And this is something that really I don't think there would be any better way to learn than just, you know, doing interviews. Yeah. And then based on that, you should prepare your content plan and uh, content itself and uh, try to avoid being, you know, very generic and trying to target uh, with one size fits all type of approach. 
you really need to kind of distinguish between you know technical roles and uh, business roles finance and operation manager or anyone else in the organization uh, who are critical for your solution to be uh, approved yes and competition for attention is just you know massive so therefore you have to target this content very very specifically to that specific person otherwise you know it just doesn't work because again competition is just you know too too high yeah so now uh, we are at the stage where we uh, gonna dig deeper into how to build a system to deliver all that what we just uh, talked to your customers yes so um, you know generally if we talk about solutions the biggest problem is actually to find who your customers are mm -hmm. and uh, content again content works like magic because what does it do it allows you to identify exactly who are the persons who are interested in the problem your solution helps to solve because you see i mean i don't know anyone who would just out of entertainment let's say read white paper about i don't know insider threats or or about uh, about uh, migrating to Azure your SQL server <laughs> yes yes exactly and you know uh, people who elect themselves to uh, sign up and uh, download this kind of materials they are kind of very clearly signaling hey I'm here and I'm interested in exactly mm -hmm. that kind of uh, that kind of uh, topic another thing which happens is actually that because you have this content and you are exchanging this uh, white paper or webinar or online assessment for customer inf information you are getting profile data things like name surname role mm -hmm. email company name industry perhaps some other questions mm -hmm. and this allows you really to figure out who is this person is it likely to be your customer or maybe it's just a student who are indeed spending some time learning about uh, migration yeah. to azure just out of academic interest yeah and then by using different tools and uh, including marketing automation and you know behavior tracking you can enhance this data with behavior data you can understand what actually this person was uh, how how he or she was interacting with your content whether the content you was sharing with them was relevant whether they read read it whether they watched it uh, how, how long they stayed in the webinar and so on and so forth whether they visited your product page how many times they did visit and uh, did they use the calculator all these signals actually can be then uh, used to understand uh, the quality of the lead and actually the the maturity of the lead yes and uh, basically you put those th things together and you can suddenly make decision and actually automated decision is this person yeah. a good marketing qualified lead does it make sense to either uh, forward it to uh, sales so that sales team can uh, can do a follow-up or perhaps it's still time to continue nurturing uh, nurturing this uh, this person all right and uh, let's now talk a bit about nurturing yeah again looking at the, the total market opportunity probably let's say 100% uh, what we see and this is also confirmed by many research uh, done and, and studies and so on that there are only 5% out there uh, from the total pie uh, of the of the market who are in the phase of consideration and phase of the active uh, research of the solution so and and the competition for this five percent is very very high and as we already mentioned so if you were not uh with these potential customers from the very beginning gaining their trust providing them insights and building a connection trusted connection it's very unlikely that you will be actually considered in the final uh final stage but at the same time there are 95 percent of others yes are you going to throw them out no that would be colossal waste and the things that you need to do you need to think really about how to nurture those uh, those contacts and you see you have already paid and invested in marketing content and advertising mm -hmm. to get their contacts to get them registered so yeah. now you need real to nurture them you need to educate them you need to help them uh, mm -hmm. and the way you do it is with sending them additional content things like I don't know case study industry reports invitations to webinar how to advise uh, blogs 
Yeah, in general, you need to keep communicating with them. You have to stay on top of their mind and uh, be patient. So you really need to kind of continue providing them anything what can be considered as a valuable information for them. And then at the point where they will become more ready, they will be definitely turning to you because you were part of their kind of daily uh, communication, daily information uh, flow. Yes. So basically what you want to do exactly as Andre said, you want to stay on top of their head until the moment when either they have a budget or they have team alignment or, or something else so that when they are ready to buy, they will turn to you. Good. So and then uh, it all comes to the building a proper uh, processes and proper system to handle all these uh, activities. Yes, and you know, here we here we now are moving into subject of marketing technologies, which is actually incredibly important. And uh, my opinion is that actually you cannot really scale your business or even grow it fast enough if you are not using marketing technologies. And what's the reason for that? <laughs> Again, we looked at uh, like only 5% uh, from uh, all the people would be ready to have sales conversation. Mm -hmm. To have those 5% or let's say have five deals, you need 100 in your pipeline. If you want to grow, probably this number number quickly increases to hundreds and thousands. And the only way you can handle these hundreds and thousands of relationship is with help of marketing technologies and specifically marketing, uh, marketing automation. Yes, and uh, also, as we said, uh, you need to kind of understand and read all these signals from the people. Otherwise, you will not be able to identify uh, this potential lead at the right time. Mm -hmm. Yes, and if we, if we talk just about a bit about marketing stack, well, what, what, what does it mean? I would, I would say that companies probably, first of all, they would need some kind of landing page form technology. They would need marketing automation. They would need integrate those technologies together. Mm -hmm. Then incredibly important, and we will talk about it in some of the following slides, is analytics pipeline view, single view dashboard, mm -hmm. and uh, many, many, many other, other, other things that just uh, helps uh, selling. Yeah, it might sound scary on one hand, but it's not. So uh, there are plenty of technologies available. So available on the market, there are companies like yours and many others offering SaaS based uh, marketing technologies. And uh, this is uh, really super helpful. Uh, same time, it's it's also important to understand what out of all of these technologies are best for you. And uh, we have gone through quite a journey in this uh, for this matter, and we have uh, kind of our own stack created, not developed by us, but we have technologies what help us to implement this system in very affordable and uh, very uh, quick manner. Yes, at the moment we are actually running almost a farm of landing pages. I think we have around 200 yeah, for, our, for, our, for, our, lot, for our for our for our for our customers. So again, incredibly important, but this can can be can be done even despite it sounds a bit scary. Now let's take a look of at uh, some kind of uh, information or analytics that uh, marketing technologies help you to obtain. Um, Again, here we have blurred out, of course, the specific uh, names and uh, deals of um, and, and deals in the pipeline. But this is a this is a look that you get uh, or that we are providing our customers in their marketing automation. Yeah, and and again, so it has been always quite a challenge to understand uh, what the outcome of all your marketing efforts, including investments, time you spend, and so on. And uh, that's the beauty of the of the system. If you build the system. You, you immediately getting a transparent uh, picture. You can see, okay, if I invested 1000 uh, euro into you know, my marketing, what I'm getting back. So you can see how many deals you have in certain stages, how they are progressing. And uh, then uh, you actually can measure uh, very precisely uh, your ROI. Yes, and uh, this kind of view is even available, you know, on mobile devices. You can have your your uh, chief executive uh, having ability at any point of time just pick up mobile phone and check how the marketing pipeline looks like, how many prospects there are, how many leads, how many marketing qualified leads, sales qualified leads, and so on. But most importantly, it also enables you for a completely different level of discussion within your own organization. So you have usually marketing and uh, separately sales. Now you have 
to you can you kind of have an opportunity have a joint effort and uh, one single point of truth truth to throughout the whole journey you can see what is happening on the side of marketing responsibilities at the same time you can also have a discussion with sales hey guys if you have these leads why they are not progressing or why they are progressing so slow how we can help what needs to be kind of improved to increase quality of the prospects we are generating and so on and so forth so it really enables for a completely new level of uh, uh, the marketing and sales management yes and, and and i think that analytics actually and and the tools we are showing and one on the next slide these are really like a super super power tools for marketing because suddenly i think for the first time in history of B2B sales, you can actually show exactly what's the value of marketing, what's the value of marketing investment, how much the lead costs, uh, how much we are spending every day or every week on which channel of, of, uh, of uh, that we are using, let's say on LinkedIn, on Facebook and so on. Yeah, this example is just showing you, uh, let's say, management dashboard where you can uh, consolidate together information from different sources because obviously there are inf you know already existing reports from Google, from Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever else. But it's uh, it's time consuming to consolidate them, and obviously also salespeople are not uh, having access to them and so on. So this type of dashboard uh, uh, simplifies the decision making process a lot. So management immediately can see what is going on. So how effective are our marketing efforts? How much we, do we pay for that? Uh, and what we are getting and how do we progressing? So for instance, you can see here like both the customer journey. So we see where customer starts, how many of them moving to the next stage and so on and so on. Same time from the pipeline perspective, we clearly see how many leads we managed to generate for the certain budget, how, ma how much one lead costs uh, for us. And then uh, we also see how this pipeline is, uh, uh, is progressing. Yes, absolutely. Now let's talk a bit about uh, what is really required for your campaigns to be successful. And this can be summarized in a very simple sentence that success equals system plus discipline. So uh, we talked already quite a lot about the, 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 the system, about, about strategy, about content, about automation. We just covered analytics. Uh, let's discuss a bit things that are related to optimization and sales management. Um, one thing I want to stress here is really that all these elements must work together. And if just one of them is not performing, it pulls down performance of everything, everything else. So it's a system and each element must support each other. And if, if each, each element, if content is good, if automation is in order, if there's transparency and analytics, optimization, sales management, etc., then you are getting really, uh, really very optimized, very, very strong campaign performance. However, what happens if, let's say, analytics is faulty? Yeah. So the reports we were showing are not available. So what happens is that actually, you know, nobody really knows what's going on and optimization is really impossible because you don't know what to optimize. Yeah, you right. cannot ma make uh, informed and fast decisions. Yeah, and as a result, your costs are very high and uh, LinkedIn and Google and Facebook mm -hmm. is making money on you, but you are not getting leads, you are not getting 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 sales, so your money is unfortunately, well, yeah, waste to use waste. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So just an example of uh, of the optimization, and today, you know, as we all are uh, in a certain way. You know, re representing IT industry, which is very progressive. We always hear machine learning, artificial intelligence, and so on and so forth. And, he and, and here is also like an example how all that enters a marketing space. And uh, today uh, we, in our practice, are leveraging machine learning uh, tools a lot. Uh, we definitely cannot uh, know what exactly will work 100%. We, of course, have some uh, you know, uh, experience based on our previous campaigns and uh, and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, every time we run campaign, we learn something. And every time we see cu customers behaving differently. So therefore, in order to get a maximized uh, um, return from your activities, you have to experiment. You have to experiment continuously. And uh, uh, just this example on the screen, what you have seen, 
is illustrating how much you can uh, improve conversion rate of your landing page if you implement different versions of these uh, landing pages. And in this particular example, we experimented just with one part of the landing page. In one case, we used uh, just a static uh, landing page where we had uh, explanatory uh, copy of text, uh, you know, explaining uh, customers about uh, what, what they can find and uh, what, what needs to be done. And in another case, uh, we actually implemented a video instead. And we, we saw that initially, uh, you know, the video case uh, or video based uh, page took over. So people start really to engage with this page better. But then in some point of time, uh, we saw that people switched from that to a static page. And we managed to increase quite significantly the conversion rate uh, by 30% all up based on these experiments. This is again just an illustration uh, how much uh, this open-minded approach and uh, agile approach to the marketing matters for your uh, ROI. Yes, and again, just uh, before we go, I want to stress that machine learning is helping immensely. And we have seen uh, like campaigns where we experiment with seven, eight different versions of ads, different visuals, different messages, static video, etc. We have seen that uh, actually top performing ad is performing 70 times better than lowest performing. Mm -hmm. And just think, if you if you run campaign with just a single ad and it happens to be the lowest performing, you're not getting results at all. And Facebook and LinkedIn are getting rich and you, you get nothing, right? So it's extremely important to experiment. Machine learning helps immensely with landing pages, with ads, also with marketing automation. However, it doesn't replace yes. good old human expert who should look after what's happening basically all the time. Like, I wouldn't trust my money to machine learning. <laughs> no way. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Just to sum up, uh, it is very important to have uh, both marketing and sales working hand to hand. But at the same time, you need to have a complete picture to make uh, fast and uh, right decisions. So therefore, making a pipeline and single view dashboard uh, must be in place. It's just, you know, something like you should not even consider not having. Yes, and, and whatever you do, you, you, you actually want and you must to have like a review weekly and no less than bi-weekly because things change all the time and you also need to hear back from sales what's the quality of leads, maybe maybe quality of content, maybe you need to change, change something. Yeah, this feedback loop is very, very critical for your campaign performance and it should be in place on a regular basis. Yes, then we already talked about it, I think one or two, two times already, but I just want to stress it again, how it is important to have really close, constructive marketing and sales collaboration. So you need to have a shared pipeline, you need to have your own internal reviews, think about optimization, and it works best if you know founder, owner, general manager is heavily involved and looks after process and makes it very clear that uh, this is really important. These things need to be done with, uh, with due diligence every week. And, uh, and that also brings great, great business, uh, business results. Yeah. Another very important aspect of uh, this process is uh, one clear single definition of what we understand by lead, you know, so that we have all the same expectations around the table. We all know what we are going after. And how do we do that? We very often face situation that uh, uh, people have a different understanding of what leads means. Marketing understand leads in one way, sales expect something different, and then this misalignment and uh, uh, unmet uh, expectations uh, created, right? Yes, so uh, whatever the definition is, it must be agreed. Otherwise, sales will complain that you are giving them them bad uh, bad leads and it doesn't make sense. Marketing from other 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 hand will will defend themselves that these are qualified leads, etc. So it needs to be agreed. Secondly, it is also very important uh, that you have uh, a system to follow up because uh, we also see um, quite often, I would say that uh, marketing, even together with sales, do a lot of uh, you know, work to generate those leads, uh, to kind of fill in the pipeline. And then 
nothing happens. So there are week after week, there are these people just standing and waiting for somebody to call them and to talk to them and so on. And uh, there should be some process, whether of, you know, telemarketing or telesales or just people, you know, from the sales organization calling those uh, and following up with those leads uh, so that to invite them for the meeting or to invite them for the demo session or anything what you have as part of your pre-sales process. Yes, and quite frankly, it's uh, surprising that it happens uh, still from time to time that uh, some clients with whom we are uh, we are working, they they are okay, they are happy to invest in lead generation campaign, we are executing everything, and for some reason they haven't thought about follow-up. I don't know, where, are, are they in doubts that it will work or something? But we have tens of leads coming in every day and basically there is like sometimes no nobody yeah, to follow but, up. But when that uh, has been changed, then we see a dramatic uh, increase in the quality, in the, in the real opportunity, number of opportunities, and then wins as a result. Yes. Absolutely. So now we are approaching the uh, second part of our webinar, couple of short parts, and let's start where to get content for your campaigns. Original content is good, but sometimes there's possibility to get it from somebody who's providing the content. Yeah, and obviously you're probably uh, being a Microsoft partner uh, are familiar with the Microsoft Partner Network, so we just give you a couple of uh, examples of what uh, type of resources can be uh, found on, on, on that particular source. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, information currently being shared, and some of that can be really used as these. Some of them need some uh, adopt, adaptation and uh, adjustments, but nevertheless, this is a good source uh, to start with. Yes, absolutely. And Microsoft uh, basically provides this content for partners to be used and they are happy if it's used. Uh, however, always, always approach a bit critically. Think of how this content is relevant exactly to your niche or to your customers. Will they, will they like it? Will it leave good impression and so on? Because first of all, you want to build trust, you want to build brand, you want to be recognized as leader yourself. So you need to watch out. Maybe some kind of some materials are maybe more um, more written for for let's say from perspective or for market of United States and uh, and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Another good uh, source of information. And here's a screenshot of a local page for Latvia. That is uh, the latest thing that uh, our partner also group launched, and that is their um, learning and information hub. So what they have done, they have basically put in one place all the information that you may need about about uh, Microsoft, so that you don't need to spend time, you know, searching different portals for different things. They have also put here market ready materials. So many of these materials, if you are also partner, you, ha you, can, you can use. And quite honestly, we have worked with also, also to develop uh, quite a bit of those uh, materials that, uh, that you, can, you, can, you can use. Yeah, and this is a, just an example of uh, our compilation of some of materials what you can get potentially from also there are different, uh, you know, uh, social media assets like teaser videos, uh, social banners, uh, infographics and many others just to get the uh, attention of people and acquire those leads. And then uh, you have also some templates for landing pages, some content like in form of ebook assessments and uh, many others. And then also reach out emails. So what you can send out to your customer database can be very, very handy. Yes. So if you are in Microsoft business, if you're partnering in also, you are lucky because chances are you can get your marketing content ready faster, cheaper and can, can launch your campaign with much less effort than would be required on your own. Yeah. All right. Okay. Right. So now it's also important when you have understood who are your customers, when you have considered building, you know, and you know already how you will implement your system, where to get funds. Yes, where to get money, how to, how to get somebody else paying for your marketing campaign. And here you, here's a view of a channel with the vendor on the left, CSP or distributor in between, then uh, partners and then customers on the right. So if you look at the channel, what motivates vendors? Vendors are motivated by internal priorities, business growth, and also innovation. This is, this is first of all, they want to keep their vendor happy. A second thing, obviously they want to grow their business. And third thing, they are also looking for some innovative ways to generate demand, do something, do something new, do something fresh. Now, and if we look at 
how these people are thinking about marketing investment. Well, first of all, they, of course, they care. I mean, they want to look good. Yes. Right. They want to have a plan which is realistic, innovative, so that they can also stand stand in with with uh, stand uh, stand out internally in company with some innovative idea. They want it to be aligned with their priorities. And one more thing, which which we see is very important for them, is real to have a sense of how it's going, but to have insight and sense of control. And uh, the dashboards we show we, we showed there, that's actually mm-hmm. some of the best way to keep your uh, sponsor, vendor, distributor uh, happy and calm and knowing of what exactly is going on. Yeah. And uh, of course, you need to come with some realistic plan, right? And uh, that uh, just to give you an example also was a recent case uh, when uh, one local partner turned to us and we worked together on building actually the strategy, go to market strategy for their new kind of offering. We uh, put together like a plan and then we together also presented this plan to to the Microsoft and to the uh, CSP. And guess what? So this plan got approved and got funded. And now uh, this partner is, uh, you know, already getting leads from campaign being run. Yes. So key thing here is to prepare a plan. And the key question here is, is your solution pulling through other products? And if it is, there's a good chance you can get uh, co-founding. And it happens perhaps more frequently than, uh, than you would think. Good. So now um, we are, you know, almost uh, finalizing our our story today. And uh, last thing, what we would like to kind of discuss is how to start. What are the steps uh, to take? Yes, and if we look uh, at a very simple way of how the process looks like, or or what you really need to need to do to implement digital sales engine to start lead generation, is first of all you need to start with strategy, with things that we talked about in the second part of webinar about how to stand out, how to position your product, uh, decide about target markets, buyers, etc. Uh, then you can proceed at doing basically two things at the same time, uh, because both of them takes time. It's developing marketing content and it's implementing marketing technology. Then you launch. Yes. And then all funny things starts. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. Don't make mistake uh, assuming that once you launch, you can you know, just sit back, relax and watch your yeah. scorecard going up. Uh, this happens as well, but it happens only if you invest in a- analytics, in continuous optimization, continuous improvement and so on. So you get your results, not by getting to launch, but but with what you do after the launch. Yeah, as we already discussed in the previous part, so you need to continuously uh, gathering like gather insights for, through your sales or telemarketing or any other channels on what is happening with your campaign, how customers feel about content you provide, activities you do, and then continue optimizing. There is no other way how to make it really working well. Yes. Now let's discuss. I mean, what we could possibly do for you. Um, you see, we've been in this business for over three years. We have run dozens of campaigns all across the world. And I think we can we can help you do implement these things quite quickly, quite well. So what if you go this way without us? So you have, I think it's fair to say quite lengthy, complex project ahead of you. Quite possibly you need to either hire new people or retrain them. So basically you need new new skills, mostly rela- mostly quantitative skills regarding testing, optimization, etc. You require new technologies, they need to be selected, researched, tested, integrated, there's quite significant risks of failure, right? Yeah, the most important is uh, actually time to market. Yeah. So you can implement anything. Uh, and that is what many companies trying to achieve uh, as well. Uh, but uh, think of, you know, time, what, how much it costs for you, and what is happening uh, outside on the market as well. And that is probably the, the biggest value what uh, we usually bring to, to our customers, besides all the, you know, competences, uh, technologies, uh, skills and, and anything like that. It's, uh, you know, significantly decreased time to market. Yes. And now if we contrast that without IBD with, with IBD, then actually we have everything ready to go. We can launch campaign in as little as three to six weeks weeks. We have done 
dozens of campaigns all across the world. So we are now really using a proven best practice. So we are not start starting from testing trials, etc. We know exactly how it should work, how it must be set up, etc. Uh, we have ready to go technology stack again, full transparency. Right, you get scorecards about every 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 dollar spent on ads, uh, exact details about pipeline, about leads, etc. Um, then we do end-to-end -end service. We perhaps didn't mention about that too much, but uh, we are also uh, exceptionally good at producing uh, marketing content, uh, white papers, ebooks, videos, animations, online assessments, basically, uh, basically you name it. And uh, I think important thing is that at the end of the day, it turns out. I mean, most customers for our service pay less than they would pay for a junior uh, full-time uh, marketing associate. Yeah, and uh, so uh, this is very much uh, in line with the overall like uh, cloud business and services approach business. Marketing uh, as a service. Yeah. So that is uh, the business model we are using and uh, that we see many customers appreciating a lot. And uh, we also, you know, therefore have uh, kind of packaged... Uh, economy scale based uh, approach where we can deliver you certain services you know in very short time as Roland already mentioned and on very uh, at very affordable costs you can see just on the screen uh, a few examples of those uh, uh, package services what we provide and in case you would be interested uh, we definitely are open to to discuss in more details but what it shows you basically if you are just about uh, considering starting start doing something in in the digital uh, space so you have maybe some few steps already done and you need help to kind of establish a better processes better a better way of doing that so then the start package would be for you and uh, you know that's definitely um, you know step step to go with if you're already doing something and uh, you have tried and you would like to grow and scale your your activities then the the grow package is exactly for you so we can build a system what we just uh, explained you uh, during the webinar and then uh, start generating on uh, ongoing basis number of leads every month uh, so that your sales team getting them they have uh, uh, leads to work with and uh, you are getting uh, you know your pipeline growing and then if you are already a pretty mature company and you are looking for ways how to scale your activities, how to, you know, really gain a, a mindset uh, or mind, mind share of your, of your potential customers, how to become a thought leader in a specific space, in specific industry or niche, the scale package is exactly for you because in, at the, in this package, we have uh, very advanced uh, sets of uh, content pieces, technologies, and the process itself to really, you know, uh, grow you to the level of the leader in certain uh, market segment. Yes, I hope by now you are really excited about the opportunity that you have with digital marketing and how well it works. So now we have a really dead serious proposal for you. Uh, I think it would be very worth for you to avoid making, you know, expensive mistakes. So what we offer is free 60 minutes call with Andres and myself present. And uh, from your side, we would like to have a marketing sales and management representatives on call. And this would be one hour of really serious strategy and visioning growth hacking call. To sign up, contact us on the email you see on the screen. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there is no obligation. Uh, so uh, we're just um, here for you to share um, our insights and experience. Um, many customers or companies with whom we did such um, uh, kind of uh, calls already, they were very grateful uh, because uh, they learn a lot on how to make things even better what they do today. So use this opportunity if you are interested. Again, no obligations. Just send us an email and we will set up a meeting with you directly. Yes. So I guess that's about it for today. Uh, so the official part of the webinar is over. Thank you to all participants. Thank you also to those who will be watching this webinar in recording. As we are running out of time, then official part is over. Let us take a look if we have any, 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 any questions coming in. 
Doesn't seem so. Yes. Um, but uh, anyway, so please feel free to reach out through different channels, either directly by email or on LinkedIn. Um, anyhow else, uh, you can even call us uh, by phone if you like. Uh, and let's uh, take your questions uh, directly. Otherwise, we wish you a great rest of the day and uh, hopefully talk to you very soon. Yes, and stay safe. Stay safe.